Hello dear Blender enthusiasts. Today I shall use my captivating robotic voice to tell you about a neat little way to create a small lighter flame, which is quite close to being considered photorealistic. At least in my oh so humble opinion. As usual, start by incinerating the default companion cube, and upon its ashes, please create a circle. The flame ought to be small, therefore the radius shall be about 5 mm. Set the edge count to 16. Oh, and do not forget to select the end gone filling option. Now, let us take a closer look. Oh my, it looks like the view clipping distance is being inconsiderate of the small scale at which we've chosen to work. Set the clip start field to 1 mm. Enter edit mode and select a face. The only one in existence, for now at least. Inset it about 5 or 6 times. While the central face is still selected go on and click the proportional editing button and select the inverse square fall off function because it's the one that is the most similar to the shape of the flame that we want. Go into the side orthographic view mode. Hit the G key to move and then the Z key to limit the motion to the Z axis. Scroll the mouse wheel upwards until the radius of the proportional editing is such that you're able to move all but the outermost edges of your mesh. Oh, yes, looks bloody perfect if I might dare say so. Now go on and add a nice little solidify modifier to the damn thing. An important point is to pick a thickness that will not cause the inner part of the mesh to intersect itself. Obviously, I have once again used the critically acclaimed value of 1 mm. Zoom onto the top part of the inner mesh, and verify that their geometry looks nice and healthy, with no crushed faces, or self-intersections. If needed, decrease the value of the thickness in the solidify modifier until the topology is correct. Apply the solidify modifier. Now we switch to the orthographic bottom view mode. This allows us to easily select the entire inner cavity mesh. The goal is to roughly make it half as tall as the outer part. Why half you might ask? Well, I have no bloody clue. I'm just guessing and trying to make a rough shape of a small light of flame. Have you seen photos of the damn things? They come in more variety of shapes than bosoms do. Now add a surface subdivision modifier. I like setting both the render and the viewport subdivision counts to 3. But once again, what do I know? Turn on the smooth shading setting and observe the glorious smoothness of the flame to be. Ignore the pinching artifacts at the top, they'll cause no obstacle in our magical journey. Now add a lattice object. Play with its scale and position until the mesh sits snugly inside the lattice like a happy pussycat in a cardboard box. Select the mesh. Then shift select the lattice and press Ctrl P. Now from the drop down menu select lattice deform. While the lattice is selected, enter edit mode and start torturing and contorting the poor mesh to give it a more flame like appearance. Once again, I'm doing guesswork here. Unleash your imagination and creativity, and seek the assistance of innumerable online photos. And if all else fails, then you can deny yourself the artistic freedom and just copy the shape I'm doing here. Fire Mesh, Fire Mesh, can do whatever a Fire Mesh can. Can it look like a web? Yes it can, it's a mesh. Look out, here comes the Fire Mesh. Sorry. Jolly good. This starts to look like the right sort of shape. Now we get to the truly interesting part. The material configuration. 
Apply a new material to the mesh. Set both the specular and the roughness values to zero. Set both the IOR and the transmission values to one. Was there anything else? Let me think. Oh, yes. Open the volume section and select volume scatter. The color should be something like a dark yellowish mustardy nameless abomination of a hue. We will most probably have to return here to try and correct it after we will be able to actually see the light of this flame. For this size of a flame we will be needing a quite high density value. Somewhere around a thousand should do. I went with an anisotropy value of 1. Keep in mind that both of these values are tuned to the size of the flame. A larger flame will most definitely need a much lower density value. Trial and error showed that it also seemed to be the case for the anisotropy value, but I'm not really sure about that. And now we shall embark on the most crucial part of this extravaganza, which is the lighting. Create a point light. Position it somewhere close to the midpoint between the tops of the inner and outer meshes. Set its radius to, you guessed it, 1 mm. Set the power to somewhere around a thousand watts. Now go to the Object Properties tab. Under Visibility uncheck the... Oh! Oops! Bloody hell, where is it? Wait a second! Ah, uh, yes, of course. How could I forget? You must first go to the rendering tab and set the engine to cycles. Now go back to the object properties tab, and under visibility uncheck the transmission checkbox. This will allow us to use the scattered light alone, discarding the direct light, which would have caused catastrophic results when glare is applied. Could you believe we're finally getting to the rendering part? If I'd known how many hours it'd take me to type all these words into the speech engine I would have given up on the whole bloody idea before ever starting it. Never mind. Shall we proceed? Indeed we shall. Open the compositing tab. Check the Use Nodes checkbox. Go to the View Layer Properties tab and check the Denoising Data checkbox. Did you notice how the render layers node suddenly grew several additional two hickeys? How fascinating! Now add a denoise filter and connect it to the render layers node in all the appropriate connections. Concerning the HDR checkbox, the little bird told me that it's better to live with checks and demanded not to investigate why. Under the threat of bodily mutilation. Now create a glare filter connecting between the denoise and the composite nodes. Set the glare type to glow fog and the threshold to zero. After connecting all the colorful circles, we succumb to the uncontrollable urge of finally rendering the damn thing only to discover that we have completely forgotten about the importance of camera positioning. How typical. Cancel the useless render and go position the camera correctly, you silly twat. Oh, and also change the background color of the universe to black. You do it. You guessed it. In the World Properties tab. Now back to positioning the camera. There is this fancy Ctrl plus Alt plus Zero keyboard shortcut that is supposed to turn your current view into the camera view, but as you can see, it does a rather bad job. To say it gently, and I always say it gently, at least when I'm sober. It seems like we have no choice besides doing it the long and tedious way. Using a vast variety of intermediate steps to accomplish a task that should have been completed in a fraction of a second using the aforementioned keyboard shortcut.
Oh and also while you're in the camera view mode, you can go to the output properties tab and check the render region checkbox. It will allow you to render a subsection of the camera view, which is quite useful in our case. I have also checked the crop to render region checkbox telepathically, but it will have no effect on the render. It just felt like the right thing to do. Or at least that is what the voices in my head told me to tell you. Now, as you can see, the color of the flame is definitely off. And the glare effect is too strong. You might be asking yourself whether it is possible to fix it. And the answer is so overwhelmingly affirmative that even affirmative consent starts feeling nervous around our answer. Select the flame mesh and go to the material tab. Under the volume section keep changing the color again and again. And again. And again and again. And again and again and again. Until you feel frustrated and your heart fills with bitter hatred towards completely every little thing in existence. And then you just type in the hex value of exactly BOB614. You might be asking yourself, how on earth did he come up with this bizarre combination of values? The short and dishonest answer is magic. The also short but truthful answer is trial and error. Lots and lots of it. And a bit of luck I suppose. Now if we render the flame the color should look more realistic. But of course the color that we've chosen to work with is once again a mere guesswork on my part. It is very likely that some of you talented people could easily come up with a better matching color. And if by any chance you do so, please do post it in the doobly-doo down below. This is also the step at which you can adjust the density value of our volume scattering. Once again, remember that this value is extremely dependent on the physical volume of the flame you've made. The values you see me using are applicable only to flames of a real average scale that lighter flames come in. You might also want to commit extreme heresy and change the radius of our point light from the holy one millimeter to one tenth of it. It'll make the density of the flame more uniform. On a second thought I'll change the density back to a value of a thousand. Oh, yes. This is much better. Finally, the only thing left to do is to adjust the glare intensity to a level which will not make us subconsciously hear scores from Michael Bay movies in our head. Go back into the compositing tab and play with the glare node parameters. I suggest that you just lower the size a bit. Maybe a value of 7 is good enough. Definitely seems good enough for me. Well this about wraps it up for this weird little tutorial of ours. Thanks for watching and I hope you've found it helpful. Maybe you'll have suggestions on how I could improve my workflow. Keep in mind that I'm in no way a professional at this stage. It's only been two weeks since I've installed Blender for the first time on my machine. Finally here is a little demonstration of what I've created using this method. As you have probably noticed already from my accent, I am Russian, therefore a very natural thing for me to try and model was an old Soviet lighter. And here it is, in all its glory. Have a good one, and may the eternal blessing of the miniature giant space hamster protect your toes from the bloodthirsty corners of your furniture.